But first, let's get into the whole issue of this trip to Beijing. The PM, of course, trying to repair the trade relationship with the Chinese Communist Party. Years of tensions, we know the economic sanctions, COVID, and a fair bit of chest beating. Uh, plenty on, but I have to say, experts right now say the world is as dangerous as it was in the late 1930s. I don't think they're wrong, and I just wonder whether our leaders globally are up to dealing with it. Join me now to discuss Peter Jennings, the Director of Strategic Analysis Australia. Peter, welcome. Thank you. Um, Thanks, Peter. I've I got to say, given all the stuff you and I have talked about over the last four or five years about the strategic challenge of China, how they are so determined to be the, you know, the global superpower within a matter of decades, Xi's long-stated ambition in his time as leader, and he's 70, uh, to take back Taiwan as he sees it. We're over there talking about lobsters and economic bonhomie. I mean, are we being lulled into a false sense of security? Yes, lobsters and, and uh, how much the Prime Minister likes pandas, uh, Peter. I, I, I thought that, um, you know, seldom have I seen a trip which is so light on for substance and so heavy on the photo opportunities. Uh, and you're absolutely right. You know, the days when we can be talking about a trade relationship with China and we sort of quarantine that in a way which says that this doesn't have to be touched by bigger geostrategic problems, th th those days are long past. Uh, you know, just in the last um, 72 hours, there was another incident in the South China Sea. I, I don't know if it was much reported here in Australia where a, where a Canadian warship, a, a helicopter operating off a Canadian warship, uh, was uh, buzzed by a Chinese fighter jet in, in a very dangerous way. Uh, and the thought occurs to me that, you know, sooner or later something there is going to happen which sees uh, a bad military mishap. And, and all of that could make... Mm a prime ministerial visit to Beijing promoting trade look really trivial and sort of misdirected uh, as a result. So, so I think it's very unfortunate that, um, you know, uh, Albanese has gone there really to commemorate the 50th anniversary of a Gough Whitlam visit, but without doing mm -hmm. sufficient homework around the national security outlook, because that's what I think is worrying most Australians. And look, what worries me is to get to this point that he gets his pictures for the, for the what really is a big Labor anniversary. It's not necessarily a, an Australian anniversary 50 years on. Um, mm. He gets his pretty pictures, but what's been the transactional price we've paid? I mean, yes, we've got Chung Lei out of detention. She should never have been in, but they've got the Port of Darwin. Uh, yes, we've got some easing of some, of some uh, trade tariffs, uh, but they've also got us to pull out a WTO anti-dumping uh, cases. Uh, you know, China doesn't do anything that, as I said earlier, that's right. It does it because it's in China's national interest. And I reckon our Prime Minister has been played by one of the best there is at a time when the world needs strength. We've got all the issues we know in Ukraine. We've certainly got the great concerns about the Middle East. And, and it feels like uh, he, we're really undercooked here. I, I agree. There's been way too much desperation to get back to China for, for this visit. I, I, I think in part so Albanese can say, well, we achieved this, the previous government couldn't do it. Uh, China has made a, mm. a tiny number of concessions, and most of those things, Peter, have been about relenting slightly on bad behaviour, like, for example, releasing a person who was effectively being kept a hostage uh, under false pretences in the, in the Chinese legal system. And most importantly, none of the big strategic issues have changed. We have China occupying those islands in the South China Sea, China threatening Taiwan, mm -hmm. China threatening India on the border there, uh, you know, China attacking Australia daily through cyber espionage for intellectual property theft. And all of these things are simply not, not discussed. They're swept under the carpet uh, in the interests of selling mm -hmm. lobsters. Uh, you, you know, I, I don't mind if Australia wants to export things to China, but that shouldn't be the highest value um, when we are so, you know, manifestly no. failing to strengthen our defence capability uh, at a time of, you know, I, I think the worst regional security outlook that we've seen really since the end of the Second World War. And I made the point too before, you know, we've got a free trade agreement that's only 10 years old now. Uh, they were completely capricious 
in a, a dishonouring that trade agreement on wine and many other things, are they just as likely tomorrow to give us lobsters and two weeks later to take the lobsters away? I mean, trying to run foreign mm. policy and defence strategy uh, via trade with China is treacherous. But while I've got you, I want to flick over to some issues out of Sydney. I'm quite concerned when I arrived back home and saw the footage of that Islamic preacher in southwest Sydney calling on Muslims to wage jihad. Uh, calls Australia hypocritical for us saying that Hamas uh, should be and is designated as a terror organisation. There are other people out there in, in relation to Australian Palestinian organisations saying, in fact, we shouldn't even list Hamas as a terror organisation. We know what ASIO has said. They've said, uh, be watchful for spontaneous violence, uh, Peter Jennings. How concerned are you? Oh, we should be concerned. And for me, the, the worry here, Peter, is, is not so much the ramblings of some uh, uh, jihadi extremist. It's, it's our own failure to properly react to them. Uh, you know, I think I spent the better part of my senior defence career on Australia's military operations that we were fighting against terrorists in Iraq and Afghanistan. Mm. Now we seem to be in a situation domestically where we're prepared to tolerate the most extreme uh, hate language uh, coming from uh, mm. uh, people who really should not have any public platform whatsoever. Now, what, why this softness has crept into Australia's domestic security, um, I, I don't know, but th there is a risk. Uh, and as your previous guest was saying, when, when you've got marches, rallies in streets, uh, sort of getting people incensed um, around issues in the Middle East, mm -hmm. You know, th this does give rise to, I think, a, a, a higher risk of terrorist behaviour uh, here in Australia. So th this is something we should all be seriously concerned about. Peter Jennings, thank you.